Assalamu alaikum, my brothers and sisters, it's not funny. People are losing their lives. Loved ones are being lost. Fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, children, spouses are being lost, subhanallah. They are returning, obviously, to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we're left with something very, very big in terms of responsibility. These orphans, these widows, or these people who have lost their loved ones, Who's going to help them? Who's going to reach out to them? Who is going to comfort them at a time when we have this pandemic? Everyone is actually worried about so many things. Subhanallah. Do you know what? If you have lost a loved one, there is no harm. There is nothing wrong in crying. Crying is natural. You're a human being. You weep, not because you're questioning Allah, but because you're going to miss your loved one, because they probably did so much for you and they were the breadwinner of the home and they did so much, subhanAllah. And now that you've lost them, it's not going to be easy. So you shed a tear or two. It's normal. It's natural. It's acceptable. And it is not a sign of weakness of Iman to cry. Even the Prophet Muhammad sallam, when he lost his son Ibrahim and on more than one occasion when he's when he shed a tear he clearly said this is not because we're questioning Allah we will not say a word that is displeasing to Allah but we are sad at the separation between us in this world Allah separated me from my son Ibrahim that's what he said and we are sad at your separation my beloved son so uh, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum asked him about his tears do you know what he said إِنَّمَا هِيَ رَحْمَةٌ جَعَلَهَا اللَّهُ فِي عِبَادِهِ الرُّحَمَةٌ Indeed, it's a sign of mercy that Allah has placed. It's the mercy that Allah has placed in the hearts of those who have a bit of mercy. Those who are merciful. May Allah help us. So if someone were to tell you you're not allowed to cry, they are wrong. It's not only uh, something normal and natural, but it's not even a sign of weakness of Iman. My brother, my sister, we are with you in this loss. Another thing. We need to understand, yes, yes indeed. There will be days when you feel low and days when you feel slightly better. You're just a human. It's normal. It's natural. Pray for your deceased. The best thing you could do for your deceased is simple istighfar. Oh Allah, forgive them, grant them Jannah. Allahumma ghfir lahu warhamhu wa sakkinhu fil Jannah. Oh Allah, forgive him, have mercy on him and grant him uh, his abode in paradise. That's probably a very powerful du'a. There are a few other sunnah du'as that you learn. Learn them with the meaning. Make du'a that way. Allahumma ghfir lahu, warhamhu, wa'afihi, wa'afu anhu, wa akrim nuzulahu, wa wasi' mudkhalahu, wa ghsilhu bil ma'i wa thalji wal barad, wa naqqihi min al-dhunubi wal khataya, kama yunaqqa thawbu al-abiyadu min al-danas. These are powerful du'as that you're calling out to Allah to grant forgiveness to the deceased. That's the most important thing you could ever, ever do. If the deceased person had some debts, they owed people money, perhaps you could help pay that. If the deceased person had something outstanding, perhaps you could help in that regard. Uh, you may want to do a charity on behalf of the deceased, according to most of the scholars that would actually benefit. If you, for example, uh, drilled a well or for example, you might have built a masjid or you might have done something. It, if you feel good about it, subhanAllah, you use your money, you used your money to do that. And you said, oh Allah, this is for your sake. And I'm doing it on behalf of the deceased. So it's not for the sake of the deceased, but it's for the sake of Allah. And you would like the reward to go to the deceased. So you're saying I'm doing it on behalf of this person. The same applies to Hajj. Uh, or something the person might have promised to do and they couldn't fulfill it, you're allowed to actually do the Hajj or the Umrah on behalf of the deceased. And Allah, الواحد, by his permission, by his will, he may accept that from you. But still the most powerful thing to do is actually to just make istighfar for this particular person repeatedly. Repeatedly meaning morning, afternoon, evening and night, you can repeat the same dua. Similarly, if you're a good, obedient relative, obedient son or daughter, obedient spouse, in the sense that obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, and you've been good to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of your relationship with Allah, that automatically will benefit the deceased, especially when they've played a role in bringing you up, when they've played a role in encouraging you to do good. If you do the good, they get a full reward for all of that. So remember this. Uh, there, is, there is no specific 
uh, you know, prayer to make from the Quran. People say we should gather on so many days and we should gather every so many days or when the year passes or when 40 days pass, etc. That is not from the Quran, nor is it from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, nor is it correct to gather people together and to say we're going to be doing all of these acts of worship together and collectively so that we can you know what? People are free to do things on their own, make dua within their own homes for the same deceased person. It doesn't have to be synchronized in terms of time. It doesn't have to be synchronized in terms of a place. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and he is aware. Uh, I wanted to go back to the first point. Let's not engage in what's known as wailing. Wailing meaning screaming and hitting each other, meaning hitting our chests and tearing our clothes. That is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we will accept humbly the decree that Allah has chosen for our loved one and for us. وَالْقَدَرْ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ مِنَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى تَقْدِيرْ uh, Predestiny, the good and bad of it comes from Allah. We won't question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we definitely do know that it's going to be difficult. I'm a human being. I ask the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'm hoping that Allah will make it easy for me. Allah will make it easy for me. So in that particular way, we've understood not to do all this wailing and crying and screaming and questioning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take it in your stride. The sabr and the patience that you will bear, you're going to have a full reward for all of that. Another good bonus is during the COVID virus and all this plague uh, type of uh, sickness that has spread, it is reported that people who pass away in that are considered martyr in terms of uh, certain rules and regulations of the hereafter. So you're a martyr in the hereafter. As for in this world, you will still be given the shroud and, and you will still be, uh, you know, the prayer will still be offered and so on because it's not a martyr of the highest level, but it's a martyr of a different level where you're a martyr for hereafter purposes, but not for worldly purposes, whereas the other, you're a martyr in both ways. So may Allah make it easy for all of you and I promise you, who knows, you may be hearing of my death or somebody else's death in a very short space of time. It can happen and you know what? It has happened to so many. So let's be prepared for this and let's not jostle uh, to get to the front of everything all the time. You know, we don't need that. Let's not fight with one another. You have an opinion, I have my opinion. I love you, my brother or my sister, with the difference of opinion. No need to become ugly about it. This is a time of pandemic. Perhaps after some time you might find I was right and perhaps after some time we might find you were right. So increase your ibadah, increase your salah, increase your dhikr, your remembrance of Allah, your acts of worship, increase your recitation of the Quran, learning the meaning of the Quran and inshallah, we should all be preparing for the meeting with Allah. It's not a bad thing. It is something that Allah will choose for us. However, I close with the same way I, I started. If you have lost a loved one, wallahi, we stand with you. It's not funny anymore. It was never funny, actually. Just today, I heard of the death of uh, a relative, and I've been hearing of these deaths every day. In fact, in South Africa, for the last two weeks or more, there's been more than a person an hour passing away consistently every single day on average. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. I'm talking about the Muslim ummah, just the Muslims. Imagine if we were to count everyone else and we care for humanity at large. May Allah make it easy. I'm not trying to scare people because obviously the bulk and the majority are still getting cured and the bulk and the majority are still coming out of it, but it's not a joke. It's difficult. Those days are really, really tough days. And then when you ultimately lose a loved one, very few people are with you. And you can't even do much because there is fear of losing more people. With how many families have we known? More than one have passed away. I know of a family where everyone passed away besides a six-year-old child. May Allah make it easy for everyone. Barakallah feekum. Stay well, stay safe. May Allah protect all of us and may Allah eradicate this. We need to seek the forgiveness of Allah turn to salah and Allah will open our doors. At the same time, don't be foolish, take precautions. There's no harm. In fact, it is our duty to take precautions and we lay our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.